Hello friends, Pete the Drummer here, and today we are visiting the deserted village of Feltville. Let's go check it out. Uh, I really debated about doing this video. For one thing, there's already a number of videos about Feltville uh, currently on YouTube. For another thing, although these buildings are really cool to look at, and we will take a look, can't get into any of them. Maybe you can if you really tried, but at this point, Feltville is, uh, it's all government property, and it's, uh, it has become a business. Uh, some of these cool old buildings, which I'll talk about the history in a minute, but some of them have been uh, refurbished. So, you know, there's, there's people around. It, it may look like it's deserted at the moment, but I would imagine I would get caught very quickly if I tried to get into one of these buildings. And on that note, uh, I do believe that the, uh, the unknown cameraman, he did a video here possibly as far back as seven or eight years ago. And if I remember correctly, he did get into one or two of these buildings. So, and if you're watching my channel, I'm sure you've heard of the unknown cameraman. So, Feltville. For those not from the area, I'm in uh, Wachung Reservation and the deserted village where these uh, old dwellings are are on the southwest uh, corner of Wachong Reservation. Wow, this is really steep. You won't be able to see this on camera, but yeesh. Watch your step if you're coming out this way. So, the history of this place is pretty interesting. Uh, it dates all the way back to the 1700s when the first settler in this area was a guy named Peter Wilcox. And he came here in around 1736, set up a sawmill. He was from Long Island and operated a business here. But the, uh, the word Feltville comes from a guy named David Felt. He came here about a hundred years after Wilcox and started buying up properties from Wilcox descendants. And, but in addition to the business, he also constructed all of these houses and a church and a school for the kids in the village and all cool stuff like that. And then over the years, so you remember what I was saying about how I would get caught very quickly if I tried to get into any of these places? As I was in mid-sentence uh, in the last segment, um, uh, some employees of the area uh, showed up, and uh, you know, I'm not. You're welcome to come down here. This is this is not not a big deal that I'm making a video and walking around these these houses and whatnot. But the point is, people work here, and a couple of these uh, old houses are actually. Uh, had been renovated or perhaps never fell into disrepair and they are private residences so not only do people work here uh, in the renovated buildings that now do other things uh, but there are a few people who actually live in little old houses like this this particular one is pretty interesting according to this sign right here and there's many of these all over Feltville. This is an example of the type of duplex that uh, David Felt built for the uh, the village's residents and the workers uh, in his in his mill. And you can see how there's the front door there, front door there. The house would be divided in the middle like that, and two families would live in a house like this. And right next to it is another old place, and that one down there. Although it's empty and looks pretty run down, that one is one of the private residences here on uh, the Feltville property. Pretty interesting. 
Now just down the road that way is the uh, big old barn that uh, is original to the Feltville operation. It has been converted to uh, be the event space now where you can get married there and you can have some kind of party there and, you know, do all sorts of uh, cool stuff. Basically, you can rent it like a, like a VFW hall or, or whatnot. I was on my way down there to give you guys a look, but there's like, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. There's like 10 people out there, so forget it. Anyway, uh, this building... Uh, has a sign that says private residence, although you can see clearly no one lives here, but apparently it's privately owned. These houses sure are beautiful. Hmm. Pretty neat. So the last time I was here, got to be 12, 13 years ago. And I honestly don't remember all of those little signs, like the one that I showed you in front of that one house, that one duplex. But now that I'm here, those little signs are everywhere. So here comes another car. Unbelievable. And as you can see, this house looks kind of run down, but you can see there's a light on and there's a mailbox. So this is one of the uh, private residences. It's not, it's actually not quite as run down as uh, some of the others. Looks like it could use some work, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if anyone lives there full time, but that house is definitely in operation. Uh, right next to it, however, is this house where you can see the roof has a tarp on it. Also everywhere are no trespassing signs. And as I've already indicated, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. It's a holiday. And I have literally seen nearly a dozen park employees <laughs> walking by. So don't try to go into any of these buildings. You will get caught. You will get in trouble. I would love to go into one of these buildings. Again, I am positive that uh, the unknown cameraman got into one of these buildings when he did a video here uh, some years ago. So do a YouTube search for that if you're interested to see what these buildings look like inside. There's really not much. There's nothing left in any of these buildings. Just, you know, bare bones. But, uh, it's still a very cool place to come and explore if you're into history and looking to have a nice walk. More signs, info signs everywhere, all about the history of Feltville. For instance, this one. Feltville workers circa 1850. That's Feltville. When Feltville was here, it was in the 1800s. Peter Wilcox, who founded this area, he dates back a hundred years prior. And here comes another car. I'm starting to wonder if maybe there's some kind of event happening at that barn today. Uh, because like I said before, you can you can rent out that barn for things like weddings and receptions and other events, whatever you want to do. Uh, I haven't seen it, I haven't been inside, but my guess is it's pretty nice in there. Uh, then there's this whole area. Look at this. Info signs everywhere, all about this place. So that's pretty cool, but we're about to see the multi-function building that has some really cool architecture, so let me show you that. Okay, so this house right there that's a private residence, and there is someone or a family uh, living there full-time. Up the road that way is the parking lot area, and just beyond is Highway 78, um, Interstate 78, uh, which is how you would get here. Um, but this building right here, this is the Feltville 
church slash store. And according to the sign out front, look at that, that's all wood. That's all wood, isn't that cool? According to the sign out front, the first floor was a general store and the second floor was a church. Pretty neat. But down this little path, it says there is a small cemetery. So let us go in search of that. But look at this little trail. How cool is this? And we're going to cross this little wooden bridge. And uh, so yeah, so now I'm going to go in search of the cemetery. I will, uh, I'll pick up when I get there. Well guys, look at this. This is the Feltville Cemetery. However, all those laid to rest here are Wilcox descendants. According to Weird New Jersey, the headstone of Peter Wilcox, the original settler in this area, his headstone is supposed to be somewhere. And I figured, I had assumed that it would be here, but I'm not seeing it. However, there are definitely some cool old headstones like this one right here. Friends, look at how cool this headstone is. This says, in memory of John Wilcox, deceased November 22nd, 1776. Seriously, how cool is that? I love the, uh, the old engraving. A lot of the headstones up in Salem, Massachusetts are like that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, here's another John Wilcox. Uh, also died 1776. This one is William Wilcox, died 1800. This one is Joseph Badgley, Bagley? Badgley, I think. He died 1785. How fascinating. Isn't that amazing? But now this is interesting. So there's what? There's five headstones here, right? But look at this. This says, interred near here are up to two dozen people, including members of the two English families who first settled this area about 1736. That is so cool. <laughs> that is amazing. Let's see what this history sign says. All right, so two interesting facts I learned from reading this historical sign. Number one, the John Wilcox headstone is the only surviving original headstone from the Wilcox family, which is why there isn't a Peter Wilcox headstone. However, this one here, Phoebe Badgley Wilcox, she was Peter Wilcox's wife. How cool is that? Pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. Anyway, uh, this video is going to end up being much longer than I had anticipated. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. The deserted village of Feltville is, uh, is a public park. You can come out here whenever you want. It's open, of course, dawn to dusk. And so, because of that, I will put the uh, Google Maps uh, coordinates down in the description. Check it out. Come out here for yourself. Having said that, if you're still watching, thank you so much. <laughs> um, having said all that, I've been doing this now since uh, 2015. So, four years. And, uh, quite frankly, I'm running out of places to film. <laughs> so, if you know of any cool sites that I should go visit, please, leave a comment. 
Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, give me a thumbs up, share it if you, uh, if you care to. And until I see you next time, go take a hike.